little down the stream. I know it took you all the way back to your kindergarten days, but right now where we want to take you is to what happens after incubation in fish farming tilapia to be precise. As you can see, I am enjoying my boat ride with Captain Wary at the back. Captain, Hariana. Well done! So let us go straight there and continue with our fantastic series on fish farming. Another day, another fantastic feature right here at Kenya's Gold. Now let us talk about tilapia, a favorite delicacy in so many homes, not just for being tasty, I can see you nodding to that, but also because of its nutritional value, very high when it comes to omega-3 proteins, just to name a few. But do you know about about the fish farming in Kenya, tilapia to be precise, as it is the most rare species in Kenya? If your answer is no, not to worry, because right here in Machakos County, Kamudanga to be precise, we will be talking about tilapia farming. Come along with me, let us get started. Hello, Patrick. How are you? Hi. Karibu sana. Unona tayari niko ready? Naona boots uko nazo. Niko na boots, niko na headnet. What is the next thing? So the next thing is you're supposed to step into the food path. Okay. So basically what we are doing, uh -huh. we want to make sure that uh, we are biosecure. Biosecurity is where we want to make sure that the final product we get at the end of the day doesn't have any biological hazard, doesn't have any chemical hazard or any physical hazard. So now that we are safe, can we get in? Yes, we can get Absolutely. in. Absolutely. After you. Thank you. Just a brief history for our viewers back at home. Kamudanga is actually a Kamba name yeah, for true. soil, for Muchanga. Soil, yeah. In Kikamba it's Mudanga. Mudanga. So Kamudanga. So basically what we do here at the hatchery is uh, we get the fish eggs, we incubate the fish eggs, then we rear them to a site that we can sell to our farmers and also we can also take them to the other line in the, in the other section of the farm because we're involved in the whole value chain of tilapia fish but also we do the catfish and the ornamental. And at what point? did Kamuzanga come up and what led to the decision of we are going to go the fish way? The owner of the farm, his name is Anthony Beto, who is also our farm director. Uh, when they were growing up, they had uh, uh, an opportunity uh, with a dam that is within the farm. So when they were growing up as young men, they found the urge of putting fish in the dam. So they went to a fish farm in Sagana, they bought some fingerlings and they came and stuck them in the dam. But after a while, the fish grew and they were big, but there came and a challenge. It was not easy for them to harvest the fish because the dam is deep and expansive. So harvesting the fish was a big challenge for them. So in that dilemma, they were told it's possible to farm fish in concrete tanks, which they found it exciting. So they went ahead and made uh, concrete tanks, which you will see on the other side of the farm. And uh, they, they, they started farming the fish. They started, that was around 2012. 2011, 2012, all the way to 2013, they used that system. But another challenge came up. When you're farming the fish outside, the production was not that good because of challenges like temperature. Kamudanga farm is around 1,600 meters above sea level. Mm -hmm. And as we know, the higher you go, the cooler it becomes. becomes. So growing fish outside is a big challenge, especially if, uh, within the month of uh, uh, May, June, July, mm -hmm. and all the way to August. It becomes very cold. The fish that we, we are keeping, they are warm climate fish. Mm -hmm. They do well in warm waters. Mm -hmm. This is the tilapia, the catfish, and the, the species of ornamental, ornamental. that we have. Mm -hmm. Because the warm climate fish, they need temperatures above 25 degrees. Mm -hmm. So producing fish within this temperature is very hard. In 2013, a new technology was incorporated. With this technology, we are farming fish in a house just to create a buffer. You can feel the temperature. Basically to make sure that our fish have the, a healthy environment for them to produce and reproduce. Mm. I want to farm my tilapia. Okay. Where do I start? Basically, you must understand the fish. So you must be able to provide the fish with all the environmental requirements that will make the fish want to, to be alive and also to grow. Mm -hmm. Because when you come to the commercial side of it, your job is to make sure that your fish are growing every day, every day are growing, mm -hmm. so that you can have something at the end of the day. The water should also be adequate enough 
and it's also be fit for aquaculture. Mm -hmm. So when you have dug your borehole, Lama, you are getting water from your river, you should take your water to an organization that can do composition analysis for this water, mm -hmm. bring it to a fish expert, he will look at the composition of this water and tell you whether you can use that water to farm fish. And this is what we are calling the water should be fit for aquaculture. When you now have that water, now you need to agree or decide what system are you going to use. Mm -hmm. Are you going to use pond farming? Are you going to use cage farming? Mm -hmm. There are those that are doing cage farming, especially mm -hmm. those who are exposed to a large water body like in Lake Victoria, mm -hmm. in, in the ocean, or can you do this kind of system? Right. So ours is RAS, R-A-S, Recirculating Aquaculture System. Remember we are in Machakos, a semi-arid place. Mm -hmm. Water is not that available in this, mm -hmm. in this area. Mm -hmm. So the little we get, we recirculate it and we use it. Mm -hmm. The water quality parameters that you need to make sure that are in, in place when you're producing fish, these are the oxygen should, should be right. Mm -hmm. This is what we call dissolved oxygen. Mm -hmm. Oxygen that is mixed with water because fish can only take that oxygen yes. uh, for, for respiration. The temperatures should be right, so you should understand the species. Am I farming a cold uh, climate fish or a warm climate fish? Mm -hmm. If it's a warm climate fish, they need temperatures between 25 to 30 degrees. Do I have those, that kind of mm -hmm. temperature? Mm -hmm. The other thing that you should check is your pH. Tilapia need uh, pH between 6.5 to 8.5. So the water that I'm getting is the pH within range. The other thing that you should factor in is the salinity level. So am I farming a freshwater fish or a salty water fish? Mm -hmm. So tilapia is a freshwater fish. So is my water fresh or is it saline? The other thing you should check is uh, the, the, the ammonia level in that water, mm -hmm. the nitrate level, and the nitrate level. So these are basically the waste from the fish. And this is well communicated with the design and the system that you're going to use. Mm -hmm. Do I have a system that can be able to remove this excrete mm -hmm. from my system? Because fish, as long as they are eating, they will excrete this waste. Right. Uh, the other factor is uh, the CO2 level in your water, mm -hmm. the alkalinity level. Alkalinity is the ability of water to resist changes in pH. Yes. There's a young person somewhere who's watching and is very keen, mm. wondering where else can I get this sort of training to mm -hmm understand before I get my feet into this kind of agriculture. We have an academy, aquaculture academy, and this is where now we are willing to share our knowledge and our experience to those startup farmers or people who are still in their business but they are not able to do that to make it. How old are the fish? in this part. What we're looking at is one of our parent stock system. These are fish that we have done a very careful selection mm -hmm. to select the best males and the best females for the purpose of reproduction so that we can get quality seeds to sell to our farmers and also to continue with our journey of uh, producing the fish. The factors that we consider one, the shape of